Australia is meant to be hosting the biggest liquefied natural gas project in the world, worth $30 billion. But will it ever go ahead with a massive row over its future? The Woodside-led project has been plagued by cost blowouts and delays. Environmentalists hate it and it's split Indigenous communities. Bronwyn Herbert reports from the Kimberley Coast. On the remote and rugged Kimberley coast, a rocky outcrop marks James Price Point. It's 60 kilometres north of Broome, and it's now pegged out for the world's biggest liquefied natural gas plant. It's aroused passion amongst environmentalists and traditional owners of the land. Our dream time stories come from our country now, right here. 77-year-old Rita Augustine is one of the traditional owners who agreed to give up their land so the gas hub could be built. That was after the Premier, Colin Barnett, threatened to compulsorily acquire it. I feel that, yeah, this is my country, yeah. But if the government wants it, he's going to take it. I think we didn't have any choice. We had to ask for something in return. That return is one of the biggest native title deals ever negotiated. One and a half billion dollars for health, housing, education and training, as well as hundreds of jobs. What we're trying to achieve is to get the best possible benefits for our people um, for generations to, um, to come. But the Indigenous community is split. Another local group, the Galarabalu people, who also have a native title claim to the land, say places where ceremonies and burials take place are threatened and are planning to fight it through the courts. There's a lot of things in it for us. For me, my family, our heritage, our culture, our songs and things, we don't want to see it get, be destroyed just for a few dollars. You know, money means nothing to us. Woodside is leading the massive development with its joint venture partners, some of the biggest in the business. Shell, BP, BHB Billiton and Japanese company Mimi. The Premier is adamant it's a win for the region. We've gone to such great lengths uh, to ensure that we pick the site that has minimal impact and that's why the state government uh, and Woodside have collectively um, con con committed to one and a half billion dollars for Aboriginal people. The state government putting in about $350 million to look after the welfare of people in the broader West Kimberley area. This is real jobs, not welfare. But the prospect of major industry in the pristine Kimberley is divisive. With hundreds of police recently flown from Perth to break up blockades. The local community has been joined by environmentalists from all around the country, including the former Greens leader, Bob Brown. Mother and baby there. Look at that. Yes. It's his first campaign out of retirement and he's here to draw attention to whales that breed and carve in the area. These creatures have found this the right place for their nursery for uh, tens of thousands of years and it's not Woodside or even the EPA and certainly not the Premier that uh, can arbitrate that they'll be better off with a gas factory stuck in the middle of this nursery. <laughs> Isn't that magnificent? 34 million cubic metres of the seabed, the equivalent of filling 13,000 Olympic pools, is said to be blasted, dredged and piped out to Commonwealth waters, three nautical miles offshore. Despite the intense opposition, the massive project is one step closer to reality. Last month it cleared a major hurdle when the State Environmental Protection Authority approved the development. The EPA has today recommended the strict conditional approval of the Browse liquefied natural gas precinct at James Price Point. But the EPA process has been mired in controversy. Three of the five EPA board members had conflicts of interest, which they declared. One was an employee of BP Australia, which is a partner in the project. Another owned Woodside shares. A third was in a super fund with Woodside shares. Despite these declarations, the chairman of the EPA, Dr Paul Vogel, maintained there was no potential or actual conflict and that the three board members should participate fully in project deliberations. But legal advice obtained by the EPA from the state solicitor 
contradicted that position. When the final recommendation decision became imminent, I then took further legal advice and on the basis of that advice, um, it was uh, determined that uh, the, the remaining board members were conflicted and couldn't participate in deliberation uh, or decision. State government documents obtained by 7.30 reveal that the government changed the rules last year, so EPA decisions could be made by just one board member instead of three. That allowed the final approval of the project to be made by the chairman alone. The public had set a lot of store in the EPA carrying out this four and a half year long assessment process and lo and behold you know it, it was all smoke and mirrors and, a, and a, basically a sham and and the whole decision had come down to one member of the EPA board. Board minutes show the conflicted members took part in years of deliberations on the Browse project before being told to stand aside from the final decision. We are very very concerned that for all the public knows, those deliberations might have meant, for example, that very important um, studies that have been submitted by the Department of State Development and Woodside, which we say are very flawed scientifically, um, we are concerned that those deliberations might have meant that those studies weren't peer-reviewed when they should have been. Controversy also surrounds the approval of the EPA's latest board member. Elizabeth Carr was ruled out of discussions after revealing she had led the Browse project for the Department of State Development. There is nothing untoward in this. It is unfortunate that uh, the final recommendation had to be handled by a single person, but very experienced, Paul Vogel's the chairman of the EPA, highly respected, highly regarded. Now that was unfortunate, but you know, Western Australia is a relatively small community. You will find people that uh, have connections in history uh, with various companies and projects. To have a board member who is employed by BP, one of the joint venture partners on this project, doesn't that raise concerns with you? Well, but not part of the final recommendation. So, you know, people have been squeaky clean in the way in which they've gone about this. So it's OK for them to be involved in all the deliberations uh, and for three quarters of the actual assessment process? Uh, well, you're arguing with me, but can I say the EPA is a recommend process uh, and it is based on scientific work. This is not a, uh, some cowboy outfit that would make a random decision. This is years of research by some of the most eminent people in the field. Prominent businessman and environmentalist Geoffrey Cousins has joined the campaign against the gas hub. He says there is no corporate precedent for a decision to be made by just a chairman. Really the whole report should be dismissed because it was unconscionable that that report was delivered by one man only. Both the WA and Federal Environment Ministers still need to approve the project, with decisions expected before the end of the year. But investor notes show some of the project partners are concerned at rising costs and delays of processing at James Price Point, and are pushing for cheaper options, including piping to existing facilities in the Pilbara. Shell's $450 million purchase of Chevron's share boosts the prospect of another processing option. Shell has proven it can process offshore, claiming it's cheaper and less destructive to the environment. I think what it does do is it gives us additional momentum. Being able to tap into Shell's capabilities and expertise really does help us out in the joint venture. Bear in mind, it's the people of Australia and Western Australia who actually own this gas. We have a if you like, as taxpayers, as the, as the population, have a legitimate commercial interest in this project. It is not simply up to the companies. Residents in Broome split over the opportunities a gas hub could bring versus the costs. I have to say, it does, does worry me, the, the impact on Broome itself. But then again, progress. As long as they don't dredge too much, I'm sure it'll be fine. I don't think that it's a done deal. And the Broome community isn't going to stop fighting until they're gone. Woodside says it won't make its final decision on the future of James Price Point until the first half of next year.